You're listening to Inside the Minds with Dante Marsh and Ryan Hyde. A podcast about life, lessons, and whatever the hell else they want to talk about. Today, we're going to talk about things. This is the show Inside the Minds podcast where you can talk about whatever the hell you want to talk about. So um, today, we're going to cover a, a, a few topics that are pretty pretty relevant, um, one being the pandemic with the whole COVID-19 thing. Um, another would be channeling thoughts, and another would be music, as we kind of briefly talked about. And then the other one would be about mental health. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. So I guess, Dante, what's kind of the, the feeling right now? You know, we're approaching Christmas. Uh, Christmas is a trigger for, can be a trigger for a lot of people. And then when you throw a pandemic on top of a trigger, it creates a bit of mayhem. What's, what's the feeling right now down in Oakland? Well, I'm, I'm outside of Oakland. Um, I'm about an hour outside of Oakland, but the, the, I don't know. I, I, for me personally, I, the pandemic has been good, but it's been bad in terms of uh, personal relationships. I think the pandemic has has uh, amplified things, blown things out of proportion. Um, you know, everybody's kind of on edge. Everybody's dealing with it. I think some people are overwhelmed and can't really focus in all areas of their life. So parts of their life is going to suffer. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough situation. It's sad, but, you know, that's, that's, that's all going back to the conversations we have now. Communication is key. Yeah. So I think, um, I think mm-hmm. I sent you the, the, the uh, it was a story about a preteen committed suicide. The yeah. Other, you know? yeah. Uh, social interaction, um, you know, things being shut down, not allowing people to go out and, 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 and enjoy themselves in, in the fashion that they were once used to currently. Um, you know, kids at home, not at school, um, all day. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's tough. It's tough. So I think... Um, in a sense, it's been some good things when you talk about getting a chance to reinvent yourself. Um, we started this podcast, um, an opportunity to um, do other things that you that you may have wanted to do previously. Now you are afforded the time. I'm in a I'm in a I'm in a, a blessed situation where I'm I, I didn't lose my my occupations due to COVID. It slowed it down some, but. Um, but it afforded me more time to do some extra things. So yeah. in terms of my, my personal business, as far as training and things of that nature. So it's, it's been a positive in that way, but then it's a lot of, it's a, it's a negative downside as well. So just trying to balance it out. Yeah. I mean, the thing for me is, um, just trying to stay positive, um, uh, not pay too much attention to the media and what's going on. Uh, but it, enough attention that I know, you know, where, uh, you know, there's certain, you know, you got to wear a mask all the time now, or, or, you know, there's, uh, you can't travel out of your city or whatever's going on. I mean, I pay, pay attention to that kind of stuff. Um, but I used it as, as growth. Um, I used it as a springboard to, uh, you know, channel my thoughts and other things. And, and like, like you said, start this podcast, mm-hmm. um, focus on, um, changing me, you know, some of my own ways, I guess you could say you've got a little bit more time. You can't go and hang out with your friends. So trying to, uh, you know, make a positive out of a negative. Um, I think, I think what's got me the most right now is, uh, there's a couple of people recently that I know that have passed away. And I, th- I think the, the thing that got me was the thought that these families of these people that have passed away, they can't go and spend time with them, you know, while they're dying in the hospital. Right. Um, you know, what kind of closure did they get? How much time did they get to spend with their family members before they passed? Did that, that person who passed away, were they alone? You know, 
um, that's some scary stuff. I mean, I, I think of my, my parents are in their 70s. And, uh, you know, to think of potentially having to say goodbye to them from another room uh, is, a, is a terrible feeling. It makes me really sad to think that. So, yeah, I, I you know, I watched my mom pass four years ago in her living room. Um, was diagnosed with colon cancer out the blue. And over the span of about a year, just depleted her. Um, tough. I, I'm going to say that. Um, don't wish that on nobody. Uh, both my parents are deceased. My dad passed pretty young, 56, had some kidney issues. So, you know, for me, um, there's been times where, you know, I've, I've been a rock all my life, but then, you know, there was a time when I, when I, when I pretty much crumbled and, and needed someone else to be the rock for me. And that's, that's the, that's part of what we're going to get into today. Um, it's tough, man. Sometimes things are out of, well, a lot of times things are out of your control. So, you know, especially when you're dealing with people, like you can't really control events so much as you can control yourself. So, you know, sometimes things happen and, you know, you can't really, you can't really control the, the the environment or the event because it's it's out of your control so you just got to kind of deal with it and that could be tough too yeah so let's uh let's get into this talk a little bit about uh channeling our inner thoughts you had a post on your social media last week that really had me thinking about uh, you know positive thoughts create <laughs> positive things instead of you know focusing on the negative what can you tell us about that for me um I've always, I've always thought like outside the box. So um, when most people would tell you as a, as a youth or something, if, you know, we have dreams, goals, and aspirations, yo, like you, you know, you, that's impossible. You, you know, you have a better chance at hitting the lottery or walking on the moon or some shit, right? So for me, always when I set my mind to something, I was able to accomplish it or, you know, go, go aggressively attack it and obtain it. Right. So channeling your thoughts for me is, um, it took, it took a while, like I'm, I'm 41 years old. So, you know, it took, it took quite some time to be able to do it effectively. And even to this day, it's still somewhat difficult because, you know, it's, 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 it's a, it's a tough exercise because it's, it's based on variables, right? Things that happen, you still gotta ah, and channel your thoughts, right? So for me, um, getting to the point where I, I just try to see the positive in everything. Like instead of, instead of dwelling on negative situations, which for me, I don't know, I think life is, life is made a lot much more hard than it needs to be. It's a lot harder than it needs to be. And we, and we as people make it that way. We make things, one plus one has always been two. We make, we make it trigonometry, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, just playing sports at a high level allowed me, I think, a, a, a one up on, you know, the average person just, you know, due to the, due to the nature of the business and the, the ability to have to shake 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 that off like instantaneously like now and then move on to the next play so that's kind of what i try to implement in my real life is not dwelling on a negative aspect so long or at least trying not to trying to find a resolution to the situation um some people they dwell on the negative dwell on the negative dwell on the negative and use that as energy to keep something going in a negative direction and I'm like, well, okay. When you when you look at the the whole piece of the puzzle, was that particular part was it that bad that you're gonna keep dwelling on it to 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 like make it a bigger you know it's a slippery slope. So we, we're, ta we're taking something this this small and turning it into something this big. Yeah. For me, I just I don't I don't feel like you can ever reach the, 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 the mountaintop or, or, or become the positive person or change the direction of things when you do that. Right. So 
in a nutshell, channeling my thoughts. I want to stay positive. I want to know what is the end game. What is my ultimate goal? What am I trying to accomplish? If I'm trying to accomplish something over here, we already know there's going to be things that, that you know, happen. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be detours. There's going to be flat tires. There's going to be U-turns. There's going to be red lights. However, if I'm set on that end result, if I'm set on that end goal, then nothing is going to get in my way. Like, I'm not, I can't let something very small de deter me from the ultimate goal. So right. I, can't let, I can't let something this small get me to the point where I'm willing to sink, sink the Titanic. I can't do that. Yeah. So I got I to gotta put things in perspective and I got to think. And also, you got to be around like-minded individuals. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's, there's people who love to seek out others that will agree with them. Yeah. Um, my, my dad used to tell me, he's like, Dante, you, you, you can't expect other people to think the way you think. And I get that, right? So for me, I, I know a lot of people. People say, Dante, you have so many friends. Like, no, I, I know a lot of people. I just have, I got a small group of who I would truly call friends. But those people, I got a lot of love, admiration and respect for because they won't cheerlead my bullshit. Right. They're gonna tell me, nah, that was wrong. And I, I gotta, I, I'm gonna respect it. And I'm not gonna get mad at them because they're, they're, they're helping me with channeling my thoughts in the right direction. Right. You know, cause you gotta have positive reinforcement. So, you know, when you, when you think of anything that you're attempting to do, as, as hard as it may be, you gotta figure out, okay, what, is, what am I trying to accomplish here? Mm -hmm. You know, things may happen that may have you down, sad or, or upset. Well, I can't stay in that state because it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to spiral out of control. Yeah. So what I have to do is I've got to find a positive out of that situation. Yeah. And then I got to think, okay, well, the positive outweighs the negative. So let me focus on the positive and, and, and focus very hard on the positive aspect of it. And everything that I do needs to take me in the positive direction. Right. Because even, even, even if it's negative and it's 100% negative, okay, I understand what that is. I don't want to keep going down that road. So I'm going to just leave the negativity alone. And yeah. move on, right? So yeah, just having the ability to, 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 to understand what your what your end game is, yeah. what what are you looking to accomplish out of out of whatever it is you're trying to do, whether it's a it's a it's a business, it's a career, it's a relationship. What is the end result that you're looking for, and then try to channel everything towards that. Right, and and I think some people's end game um, could actually just be as small as, and I shouldn't say small, but even just getting through a day, day That's by it. day, right. Absolutely. I agree. I think um, you got to you got to start small. You can't focus on <clears throat> you can't just focus on, OK, the big picture from the gate. You got to know, OK, that's what I'm ultimately trying to get to. But there's a there's a series of small things that will lead up to that big picture. Yeah. And yeah, people got to focus on the small things. Exactly. For sure. Um, so I guess for me, <clears throat> back back 2008 was a, a pretty hard year for me mm -hmm. and it got to the point where I, I was having suicidal thoughts um, I didn't think there was a way out I didn't think anything was going to get better Com completely completely focused on every negative aspect at that time that I could think of you know one thing led to another and I, I just wanted I wanted I, I didn't want to hurt anymore I basically wanted to die but the thing with that is is that I actually didn't want to die I didn't want, I didn't want to be dead. I just wanted the pain to stop, you know? Uh, and I think that's a lot for a lot of these people thinking these things um, is exactly that. They actually don't want to die. They just want the pain to stop. So anyways, I had actually gone, went as far as making a plan. My plan, I mean, I, I wasn't, I'm not one that, that can hurt myself. You know, I, I wasn't going to go get a gun. I wasn't going to, you know, I wasn't going to hang myself. Um, I actually went to a hardware store and bought a hose for a dryer, a dryer hose, and a roll of duct tape. And I was leaving the hardware store and I was paying for this stuff. 
And I, I can only think about the girl who was selling it to me, didn't mm -hmm. have a clue of what I was, what I was going to use this stuff for. And I thought to myself, you know, she, she probably knew what my plan was. She probably would have tried to stop me, probably wouldn't have sold it to me. But, you know, that, that I just sat in my car thinking that and cried because it really got me, right? So my plan was to hook the, the hose up to the exhaust in my car, duct tape the other end of my back window, <coughs> turn the car on and, and go to sleep. Um, but I mean, I, I, the thing for me is, um, I didn't think that I could maybe not do the job properly enough. And I was worried about being a vegetable. Right. Um, so I reached out, luckily for me, I reached out to a former employer of mine and I just said, Hey, look, I'm having these suicidal thoughts. I need some help. And, uh, luckily for me, he, he was dating a, a mental health nurse at the time and she was able to point me in the right direction. And, uh, you know, walk me through coming out of that state. But, um, I mean, I, I tried to reach out to friends of mine and they all kind of took it not seriously enough. Um, I mean, we've had training through my work now on dealing with uh, people having suicidal thoughts. And for me, I mean, I checked off every box back then of where I was in that state of being suicidal. Like I was like in the deep depression and uh, nobody around me recognized it. You know, it was a cry for help. And uh, I, I mean, I was, I, it was close, man. It was close, like really close. Nobody, nobody knows when you, like I went through a battle of depression back in 2012, I believe it was. And uh, yeah, I, I went to the gym one day and I was, I was working out and I had an anxiety attack. I was like, what the? Like just, I felt imminent danger. Like, <laughs> like something bad was about to happen. Like, I don't, I don't know if I want to say I thought I was going to die. That's what I thought, but I don't know what that feeling feels like. Right. Yeah. I know I felt this unwavering big load of fear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell is going on? And I start feeling funny. So I jumped in my car, drove home ran upstairs to my bedroom and laid on my bed and just was like, what the hell is going on? So that was the beginning of the depression thing for me. And what's crazy is, well, let me not say crazy, what's, what's, what's what bizarre to me anyway, I, I, I have a background with being a counselor in my off seasons back in my twenties at a Groupon facility. So, and you have these traumatized kids. Oh, Mr. Dante, I'm depressed. And I'm thinking, life is amazing. What are you talking about? You know, until, until it, it happened to me. So mental health is real. Depression is real. And for like a year, I felt like I had a, a backpack on. Like I had a spirit attached to me or something. And it's real. And nobody nobody can understand it's not it's hard to explain like you're going through something and it, it's affecting you and you're trying to convey that to someone else and they're looking at you like you're okay you're fine like but you're like no I'm not it's, it's something wrong yeah. so I never had uh any suicidal thoughts but deep dark place very afraid as a, and I'm not afraid of much, but I, I was afraid of that space. Like that space is, is tough. And um, I kind of thought about, man, did I get too many concussions? Am I, is, is that going on? Like, I didn't know what was, what was going on. So um, I dealt with a lot of prayer, a whole yeah. lot of prayer. And um eventually I and I was still playing ball at that at that time so I had I had my teammates and I had an outlet that I've loved all my life and that ended up being my profession mm -hmm. so that helped me immensely because had I not had I not been playing ball and being away and surrounded by the the, the distraction of what I love to do I don't know what would have happened. Yeah. As you know, the idle time in the idle mind is, is the devil's playground. So mm -hmm. 
I had a, a real good distraction. Play some of my best ball too. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I know it's tough, man, but uh, yeah, you definitely got to communicate your feelings. Um, a lot of people don't know they have mental health issues. Right. Um, you know, my, my, my bachelor's is in sociology, so I took my fair share of uh, psychology classes. So I'm, I'm, I'm aware, you know, trauma as a kid could lead to it. And you suppress those issues and those feelings. And then later on as an adult, something triggers that. Yep. Um, you know, past, past situations that you've been in, you know, you, you hold on to those because they were trauma, traumatized, you know, it's trauma, it, it traumatized you to the point where anything that you try to do moving forward that, that rears its ugly head and you, 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 you use that and you, I think your mind plays tricks on you and, you know, uses that and it, and it, and it, it can mess things up for you moving forward. Yeah. So going back to channeling my thoughts, when I, when I, you know, those are learning, learning lessons or, or, or situations rather that you learn from. And when you're able to sit there without the emotion and calm down and really try to focus, like, yo, I'm tripping. Like that, that has nothing to do with this. It's not even in the same ballpark. Yeah. So channeling my thoughts in a positive manner so I can keep those, those past uh, traumas from from ruining what I got going forward. Right. That that's really hard though to put a pause on those emotions mm -hmm. and 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 think about what's really going on. Especially you know when you're right in the middle of whatever is is happening to you. Then you know the negative. That that's really difficult. But that's 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 a part of the, the the key of communication. When you when you have an outlet, <clears throat> you go and talk to somebody. Like my whole thing is, I went to therapy before. I used to have a temper problem. I you know I had to do it, and I there were some things about me that I didn't like about me. The old yeah. me, <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. So now I'm a um, I communicate. I I try to communicate. I'm not getting all angry and, and hype. Um, yo, let's talk about it. what's, what's this, what's the issue? Yeah. You know? And I think a lot of people based on emotion and, 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 and feeling hurt and feeling, um, not, not, not listened to, they choose to channel their thoughts on it in a, in a negative, in a negative manner. Yeah. Because I think some people do, they function well with chaos, mm -hmm. if, that, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Some people have to have chaos. They have to have some negative energy to function. Mm -hmm. And then some people get in a situation to where they become overwhelmed. And they don't, instead of talking about it, they, they let it manifest and, and grow into this thing that's uncontrollable and yep. it, it like we go back to something that was this small mm -hmm. turns into something this big mm -hmm. because we became overwhelmed and we never addressed the small thing that was that was that was a, there for us to address it was an easy fix so we find ourselves allowing one thing to turn the domino effect yeah, you know what I mean. We, you know, if we if we knock down the first domino, the whole row of dominoes are gonna fall over. Mm -hmm. So instead of knocking down the first domino, let's let's not knock down that first domino, and let's reassess the whole situation. So when I'm when I'm try to you know I do motivational speaking too. So it's easier said than done. You have sure. to be able to do the do these exercises, and yeah. uh, in anything you do you know, continuously, or you, you know, it's repetition, you get better and better at it eventually. So, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a mental exercise. And I think right now, during the, the you know, current state of what's going on in the world, people, people not channeling their thoughts, they're, 
they they get on this train and they ride. So, <laughs> you yeah. know, you got to be able to um, understand. And I think that's that's difficult for everybody. And I'm not, I, I haven't mastered it, but I, I think about these things. So at least it's, you know, something to think about. So yeah. I know what's going on. I look at the whole, you know, scenario. Mm -hmm. You got COVID, you got people at home, you got, you know, so many different things going on. You don't feel like you can be yourself or what your quote unquote normal self was. You can't really go hang out, you know. So you find yourself in a negative situation, you know, a negative energy type space. Yeah. And that can turn into something else. So, you know, the, the suicide thing, man, that's that's why I sent you that message. Like, I'm like, because I'm, I'm in education and a kid kill, shooting themselves on Zoom, like, 11 years old that, that's 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 terrible that that's that's really sad that's that's it's, sad it's beyond sad because these kids are dealing with some we've never dealt with anything like this so you can no. just imagine what a kid who doesn't have the mental capacity as an adult because even though even there's adults that are doing this shit like it's tough so yeah. imagine what that could be doing to a, a, a child you know well Dante think of yourself being 11 years old you were probably playing football, you yeah. know, 11, 12 years old. And let's just say, you know, your, your dad comes to you and says, Dante, you can't play football this year or right now because, because of this pandemic. What, what would that have done to you? It probably would have flipped your life upside down. It would have flipped my life upside down. But I don't think I would have been suicidal. And, I, and once again, here's the deal for me. But sorry, but not just that, though. So not not just not football, but I mean, you might be like, you can't go to school. You're not hanging out with your with your friends. You know, you can't. You, you know, you're a baseball player. You can't play baseball. You can't. It becomes like you can't and you can't and you can't. And then you go home and mom and dad are fighting, or you know, it's just a whole big, you know. Yeah, it's difficult. So once again, um, we didn't have social media back then. Nope. So I wish we did. But we I, do, I, I do too for the simple fact that I think I would have benefited from it I because I benefited from it today like social media is not a detriment for me like when I'm on social media I'm not playing around like I'm you know I've created business on social media yeah you know? so social media is is not a, a thing for me that if I if I don't have social media, the, the world is over. Like I was who I am before social media, so it didn't matter. But there's a lot of positive things to social media if used in the right right way. Yeah, and I think that contributes to some of the negative energy a lot of the times, especially with younger people. Um, like being in education, you 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 see these young people they can't do nothing without the phone. No. And I'm like, what are you going to do when you, when you have a job? Like I'm on my phone a lot due, due to, due to what I do, but I don't, if I, I don't have to have it in my hand 24 seven. No, no. But I see that right now with these young cats, you know, I can't, I can't say too much about it, but I mean, I, I see, you know, the younger generation at work on their phones constantly. You can't even put your phone down long enough in an eight-hour span to do your job, or maybe save it for lunchtime. Um, you know they're sitting in meetings on their phones; they can't function without them. No, they can't. So, I mean, once again, you, you, we're living in a time where there's instant gratification, and if yep. people can't get what they want right then and there, there's a problem. Yeah, and I think it's affected the development of young people. Mm -hmm. I think it's helped create ADHD because I don't believe ADHD is a real thing, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, and that's my personal opinion. So, you know, I don't want nobody getting <laughs> all fancy, but that's just my personal opinion. When you're talking about um, kids have to be stimulated 24 yeah. seven, even from adults, like, you you can't sustain that you like that's why people get hooked on drugs yeah. is because or become alcoholic because of the feeling that they get when they're when they're in that state they want that feeling all the time yeah 
there's there's no way on the planet you can sustain that 24 7 you can't no you know just like my grandfather he's 94 years old and he you know he was married to my grandmother for 72 years wow. until she passed away in 2015 and he used to just tell me as a young dude like it like you know a relationship is like a seesaw one day that person gonna love you more than you love them and then it's a balance in that so i say all that to say you can't be stimulated 24 7 so when you give a kid a, a device and they're four or five years old and they're hot and they, they're running around with iphones you you setting that kid up for failure nobody goes outside no and then you know it's the imagery that's on there you can't you can't you can't control what's you know going on on that device 20 like 100 percent. no so you're having young people you're catching them doing inappropriate things because that's what they're seeing on the phone yeah and you're 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 just you're you're setting you're setting these young people up for failure, and I yeah. think it's a great distractor. Mm -hmm. You know, like even 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 watching how and I I, I tell some of my coworkers like, dude, if I was in high school right now, I have a I'd be the valedictorian. Yeah, <laughs> it's because it's all they do is they they don't do any of the work really. Right, they screenshot and send it to each other, so nobody's really working. Not. No, exactly. Not. And I, I don't understand how these kids aren't like A model students, honestly, with that much at their <laughs> fingertips, dude. We used to have to go sit in a freaking library to do our fucking essay. Sorry, pardon my language, but you know what I'm saying, right? We were sitting in the library. We weren't sitting at home on our phones. Well, yeah, once again, parenting. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm from that era where, you know, it was two prompts and off with your head. Like, yeah. You know, no, you're not we're not gonna keep having the same discussion and you keep doing the same things and i think you know i'm a parent i have an 18 year old who just graduated last year and an 11 year old so um for me how i parent it you know a lot of people some people may not agree with my parenting skills and i'm, I'm okay with that because those are my children you yeah. know yeah. Um, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be my child's friend i would never do that right <laughs> like even to this day i consider my son he's grown you, you know, you, you, you're 18, you graduate high school, you, you're, you're heading into young adulthood. So our conversations are different. I'm not so rah, rah. I'm kind of like, hey, man, I wouldn't do that or I'll do this. But, you know, you, you, you grown now. So you do what you do. You, you figure it out. I'm yeah. here as the dad. I support you in, a, in, in whatever positive endeavor you got going on. But I'm not supporting the bullshit. I'm just not. So yeah. I'm giving him an opportunity to make choices and decisions versus you know why 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 he was still in school and and, and before he graduated i was more hands-on with it and i mean i just feel like you know some of the stuff my daddy told me he's like man i i'm not your friend you don't gotta like me but you're gonna respect me right <laughs> so yeah. and he became my best friend at 16 before i graduated high school because as a young person we we want to be we want to have structure we want discipline, like yeah. we, we do. We just don't know how to ask for it. So you can't you can't be your kid's friend. It, right. it won't work. It won't work. And I've, I've 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 I know that personally because you know I think had my father been my friend, I I probably wouldn't have made it to where I made it to. I needed right. that that stern structure early on, and then as I started to understand why the read the rhyme or reason why he was doing some of the things he was doing, it made sense to me. Mm -hmm. So by the time I became 16, 17, before I went off to college, it's my best friend, you know, because yeah. because of the respect level, yeah, you know, the, the fear slash respect that that of that, you know, parent. It's, 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 it's crucial. Yeah, it's crucial. I know back in the day, I feed I feared my parents. Uh, you know, not my mom, not not as much, but my dad. Mm -hmm. my, my mom ever came to me and said, you know, you wait till your dad gets home. I'd be like, oh yeah. shit. Hey, yeah. <laughs> it's off the hook when my dad gets home. You know, I try and try and hide into the walls, basically, right? You might um, get woke up with a belt. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. And yep, yep. My mom is like, wait till your daddy get home. But yep. see, my mom was my mom was uh 
she could take like you could push her to a certain point then you might get an object might fly across the, across the room you yeah. know she was one of those so fiery woman but you know with with us she had she had a limit but it was wait till your daddy get home wait yeah. boy and you praying like man i hope he tired he go to sleep and, <laughs> you know i got woke up a few times with that belt yeah and i mean you don't have to beat your kids i'm not i'm not i'm not no. advocating for beating your kids but I, I i think it should be an option still uh, i like agree that. man if it's deserving because I, i'll guarantee you this every time i did get the belt i deserved mm -hmm. it Absolutely. i didn't get it where i didn't deserve it there was a reason for it right you know um yeah. Yeah, dude, it scared, you know, scared the shit out of me. I, I was, you know, I, I, I was afraid of my dad. Mm. I would keep me in line. Yeah. You know, these kids nowadays that just have no fear. And I mean, not maybe fearing your parents isn't a good thing. Like, honestly, you, you know, know I, I think it's a, I think it's necessary. Cause, cause here, it's, here's, it's definitely a tool no, for because, the parent. Well, I, I think here's why I say it's necessary. Right. So you fear getting arrested, right? Yep. You fear going to jail. Yep. So there's laws of the land put in place that are enforced by the judicial system and police officers, correct? Yes, sir. So you're not going to drink Step out of bounds. a pint of Hennessy and get behind the wheel of your car in 2020 and think that's cool. You're not nope. going to do that. No. Because there's a fear of the concept, like the consequence behind the, 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 the choice or the action, right? Yeah. So the reason why it's different today versus when we came up is because there's no fear for a consequence. Right. If, I, if I, as a parent tell you, if you do that again, I'm gonna do this, but I keep saying that. They, a kid, no, especially a teenager. They, my son knew like, oh, he just, he just talking shit, he ain't gonna do yeah. it. No, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not bluffing. I'm not doing none of that because, you know, here's how I look at it. Yeah, you you know, especially with boys, we we're a different animal. You you're gonna do what you're gonna do, regardless, yeah. right? However, I'm gonna start thinking, like, damn, if my daddy find out, he gonna kill me. <laughs> yep. you know what I'm so it kind of kept you from going too far yep. if you will so the fear to me is is less of a the fear but more aligns itself with respect because i fear going to jail i fear getting arrested so i'm not going to do anything that's going to lead to getting arrested if that makes sense yeah i don't i don't want to go to jail that's no place know. for a person, right? Nope. So, so I'm gonna probably toe the line ever so gently because I know if if I there's a the, my 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 the, the percentage or the chances of me going to jail get greater and greater once I go all the way in. Right. So I think the the fear respect and then once the once the child has no fear of respect, I mean it's kind of one and the same to me. Yeah. Because once once that's gone, they're going to they gonna try you every time. Yeah. You know, so there's just it's, it's so many. It's, uh, it's tough, man. You talking about it's, it's a good show. You talk about a lot of things. <laughs> Mental <laughs> health. <laughs> I got a story for you, Dante. I got but a story no, it's, for you. It's, it's, it's serious business because that yeah. all plays a plays a role into everything we're talking about. You know? Yeah. You know, you have you have young people who 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 come up in a and you know with the lack thereof, and then when they become adults, they don't understand. Like now, when you make decisions, there's consequences behind that shit. Like, yeah, ain't there's no there's no more threats. There's no more bluffing. Yeah. So for me, how I was raised was I'm gonna make sure you know because I don't want you to get out here in the streets and the police let you know. <laughs> exactly you know what i'm saying exactly oh so, that's just that's just my thoughts on that i think we got to be a little more stern with the with the young people and our expectation level of young people has to increase again because i feel like we don't have a we don't have a uh 
we lowered our expectations. Yeah. You know, and, and they don't, there's no, there's no motivation to, to strive anymore because it's like, whatever. Exactly. So I got a bit of a story for you. Um, so I'm adopted. Um, I have an older sister who's also adopted. Um, I did find my birth mother, um, got in touch with her. It's been, you know, pretty awesome 10 years with that. I'll get into that in another show. <clears throat> but my story is, so I'm 23, 24 years old. <sighs> Family function, it's me, my daughter, my, my daughter's mother, mm -hmm. uh, my sister, her boyfriend, and her daughter were at my parents' house. So it's, uh, I think it was Easter or some shit like that. So anyways, my daughter is, goes off into my parents' room and she's playing around with something. She knocks something over. So this is the history between me and my sister. I, I haven't talked to my sister right now, probably close to a year. Um, my sister actually knocked me out six to 10 times out cold, punching me in the head for stuff over like taking the TV remote or changing the channel. Mm. And my sister would tell me, that's just brotherly love. That's just tough love. I mean, I, I'll admit that I was a pest. I mean, I didn't get exactly get what I deserved, but I mean, I'd get hit. So long story short, <clears throat> I go into my daughter. Sorry, my daughter's in my parents' bedroom. I go in and see what she's doing. She'd broken something or done something. So I walk in and I'm talking to my daughter. My sister comes in. My mom comes in. And uh, my sister says something chippery in front of my mom. And I said something back. The next thing I know, my sister hits me right in front of my mom. And I can hear in the background was my sister's boyfriend laughing. So I'm like, see, mom, this is the kind of shit that I put up with basically my whole life. <laughs> and I walked out of my mom's living mom's bedroom. I went into the living room and I felt so disrespected in my parents' house that I grew up in mm -hmm. that I beat the shit out of my sister's boyfriend in my parents' living room in oh. front of everybody. And my dad finally settled it down. He's like, boy, sit your ass back on that couch. So I sat down on the couch. And this is why I'm talking about it. Because the one time, just being 24 years old, I actually stood, about, stood up off the couch and stood in my dad's face. And I was like, what are you going to do about it? And I sat my ass down so fucking fast when I saw the look on his face. Mm -hmm. I was just like, whoa, like, what have I done, right? Yeah. And uh Anyways, I sat down and, you know, he controlled everything down and just said, you know, what the hell is going on or whatever. Um, but my dad said later on, it was probably one of the best shows he's ever seen in his life when I beat the shit out of my sister's boyfriend. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, that was the one time I actually stood up to my dad with, you know, which is what I'm getting at. And I still fear him to this day, you know? As you, but see, that's the respect part of it, though. Mm -hmm. So here, here's my thing. You can once you out of my, you know, vision or you're, you're not, <clears throat> how can I say? Cause I mean, we all grew up, we, we got a whooping or, you know, chest ties or punish. We mumble shit under our breath. I hate that motherfucker. Right? <laughs> but you knew that you would never say that to your parent because of the yeah. fear and the respect. Yeah. So, you know, that I think that 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 still holds true to today if it's if it's if it's applied because yeah. <clears throat> your kids will go out and make decisions without you present. I'm already knowing. I knew my son was probably doing stuff that he know he would not do had I had I had I been around or aware. We all have done that. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. But there's a certain level of. I'm not going to take it too far because if my daddy find out, you know, so I think when you do that, you, you increase the level of responsibility by the, by the young person as they mature, mm -hmm. because they, they start to understand why you were doing what you were doing. It's not because you're being mean. It's not because you're an asshole. It's because you've lived there. You know, you live yeah. their life already. Yeah. They haven't lived yours, so they don't know. That's right. So, you know, and I think once once the 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 young person feels as if they're your equal, mm -hmm. it's over. You lost. Yeah. You lost. So I hundred percent have not and will not ever swear at my parents. No way. Absolutely not. I have way too much respect for my parents, and that's just not happening. 
you know, that's 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 crossing boundaries for me. Yeah. Not happening. Absolutely, it shouldn't. No, it no, should. never happened. Well, you know, such is life. <laughs> yeah. So, so let, let let's get into this for a minute. <clears throat> Just last weekend, we had two legends in the boxing ring at the same time mm -hmm. between uh, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. What were your thoughts on that fight? I'm an Iron Mike fan. Yep. So, so am I. I. You know, and I was a Roy Jones fan. So too. am I. But totally two different boxing styles. Yeah. Two different class. I know Roy, you know, parlayed around a little bit with the heavyweight before it was over. But I, I, I got mixed feelings about that fight. I don't. Yeah. Yes, it was it was an opportunity to uh, generate some um, some interest and some something to do, you know. Considering all this, what's going on, I think the the best part of the fight was, was Nate Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that was that was too much. No, that was the most ex exciting part of the whole call. Yeah. Like we sat there and watched. I, you know, and. I'm such a Mike Tyson fan. People, you know, I get in arguments. I, I cried when I was like 11 or 12 when he lost to Buster Douglas because I didn't think that's the baddest man on the planet. Yeah. That, you know, right? Yeah. So to see him in that state, you know, it, it was, it was, it, it hurt for me to see Mike like that, you know, as a kid. Yeah. Um, I just, I, it didn't, it didn't do it for me. It wasn't, and I, and I think I kind of felt like Mike was holding back. I think Mike was probably afraid of hurting Roy. I, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I just, I just felt like I'm not after, like leading up to, I'm kind of like, you know, and seeing the shape Mike is in at yeah. 50 years old, amazing. Mike, Mike can still get down. Yeah. And then he just, he really didn't showcase that, like from the the the, the little sparring practices he did. Oh, he looked insane. Man, look, if he would have did any of that in that ring, Roy Jones Jones would still be hurt right now. So yeah. I yeah. I it was that. Eh. Yeah. I <laughs> thought I thought Roy, I thought Roy danced around a lot and tangled up. Mm -hmm. You know, he's cl clenching. Roy maybe he looked a little heavier than he let's you know, let's be honest. Yeah. He he did look out of shape compared to what he normally is in. Right. Don't get me wrong, the man for you know 50 some years old looked in really good shape. But not 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 the boxing Roy Jones Jr. shape we've all been accustomed to, right? Not at all. Not at all. Um, so an interesting thing on that, if you could see, and I think they did announce it, was it was like a a um, a legends, um, some kind of like legends boxing thing that they're going to start doing, maybe in the future. But I don't know if you saw this last week, and it's probably going on a bit longer. Is that uh, Evander Holyfield is now calling out Mike Tyson? So let you know, right? Maybe so, maybe round three. No, not interested. Not interested. And and quite honestly, I think Michael Michael whoop Evander at this point. I I think had Mike fought Evander earlier in his career and Lennox Lewis earlier in his career, I think Mike would have won. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Pre pre jail, pre life spiraling out of control yeah. with the drugs and all this stuff like. Mike would have beat anybody back then, though. That's that's my belief, and nobody yeah. can tell me anything different. I mean, I'm a, I'm gonna put Mike up there in the same caliber as Muhammad Ali. Okay, that's you know, of yeah. my all time greats. Yeah, it didn't, you know, it didn't turn into what it should and could have. No, nope. there were outside variables that that I think helped that, but. Um, I, I truly believe he's a he's a he's a classic warrior. When you watch the like the 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 the, the documentaries and stuff on him pr yeah. prior to Customato passing away, I, you know I, it, I I don't think nobody could deal with Mike at that at that point. No, just so. just the absolute fear of Mike walking to the ring in black yeah. gloves, black trunks, black boots, yeah. with this absolute fucking crazy ass look on his face was enough to strike fear in any man and mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine if you know some of the, the hardships and bullshit that Mike went through you know going to jail and whatever else happened to him had that not happened my goodness dude I don't think he ever would have lost no I, you're talking you're talking about a guy who who won most fights before he got into the ring so yep. you know he, he was definitely an imposing figure I, yeah. I 
just, I just don't see anybody being able to deal with it. The, the size about my height at 220 though, 220. And yeah. just the explosive power and quickness for his size and being able to 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 inflict that type of damage on people and then and you know you have you have pundits and fans and you know guys that think they know it all well who who did he fight yeah <laughs> hey man he fought who they put in front of him yeah. <laughs> at the time yeah. at the time you know so you know who did he fight the man was 20 years old man like he fought he fought who they put in front of him yeah so you can't you can't take away his greatness. Like yeah. I I even with it's just like the Bo Jackson thing. You know, I'm a Raider fan, Oakland Raider, by the way. They will always be the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> but uh, it's like, just like the Bo Jackson thing. It's like if we can say, we can, we can, we can go out on a limb and say, if he plays a a a a, a, a complete 16 game season in the NFL for an extended period of time, let's say three, maybe five years. Bo Jackson may be the best running back to ever play the game. I agree. And that's just my opinion. Yeah. But based on his limited body of work, <laughs> we can all suggest what I just said. Yeah. Because it was, it was phenomenal. You're talking about probably the most blessed physical specimen yep. as an athlete. Now this guy is major league baseball and professional yep. football and world-class speed as a sprinter at yep. 6'1", 225. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it was amazing. You know, him and him and Deion Sanders are probably two of the, two of the best overall athletes I've ever seen in my lifetime. I agree. So, yeah. We can always make that argument, what ifs, but you know, I just I feel like you can you can apply those to a Mike Tyson and a Bo Jackson. I 100% agree. Yeah, just thinking of you know Bo Jackson, if he had played like you said in three, five, maybe six, six, seven years healthy football, yeah. would have been yeah, would have been just, putting up he, big numbers. He was splitting time. You you, you yeah, play eight or nine games, you know, with the Royals, and then he'd come over and play eight or you know nine games with the. With the Raiders, and I mean, even when he was with the Raiders, I mean, you still had Marcus Allen. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, that's the dude was phenomenal in his short period of time in 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 the, in the National Football League. It was, you know, Bo knows like yeah, nothing that that you. I mean, you you had similar. I, I would like to say similar guys of that era. As a kid, I was, you know, uh, enamored or infatuated with watching Bo Jackson. Um, Herschel Walker, mm -hmm. Tony Tony Dorsett was 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 you know retiring. You, I think I caught the last little bit of Tony D. Um, uh, Emmett Smith was good. I just I just never was an Emmett Smith fan. I just never. Right. Was. Uh, Eric Dickerson. I was a big Eric Dickerson fan. You know. So those 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 are Barry Sanders, obviously. So those. Oh, so I was just guys. gonna say. Yeah, there were guys back then in the eighties, man, that were, that could play in any era and that were very great, like extremely good, you know, and you, t you talk about Barry who retires early. I was just going to say that too, <laughs> that contract issue, you know, walks away and there's a thought that he may come back. He never did come back. Nah. He never came he, back. I, you know, Barry is different. Like I, I could, I just knew he was going to come back, man, but uh, yeah, I thought so. He's, he, he accomplished everything that he needed to accomplish. So coming back Why he, 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 he never was gonna win a championship in detroit I mean, see the thing is well he exactly he didn't have to come back with detroit though when he retired he could have come back and played for somebody else but i mean but just, i guess take, he just didn't want it you take the chance of coming back and going to another team and not having the the same output or the same the same you know numbers or or having the same ability to to do those same type of things he did in Detroit, even though Detroit was terrible. Yeah. Um, you know, that the offense was built around him. He played virtually with no fullback. It was basically like the run and shoot. And it was a pass happy, you know, pass oriented offense with one back. And yep. he did all those things with no fullback. <laughs> That's crazy. So, 
when you when you think about it and, and you know you have these arguments you say well you know let's 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 put Barry Sanders behind the, the Dallas Cowboys of that mm-hmm. time that offensive line yeah or like the Eric Dickerson or, or or you know what I mean those type of guys behind that line and you talking about 20 25,000 rushing yards yeah you know so if now we're projecting so these are just opinion based but that's truly what I believe. So Dante, you and I have talked a little bit about music. Um, get into a little bit about music. Um, coming from the Bay Area, I guess for you, <clears throat> so being up on the, in the West Coast, uh, you know, born in the 70s, 80s and the 90s, you know, late 80s, 90s, getting into a lot of hip hop. Um, first big group that, could think, that I can think of, NWA, yeah. then Dr. Dre. You know, then Ice Cube, mm-hmm. Easy E was there. I remember the day Easy E died. I was all, oh my goodness, yo, Easy E's dead. Like just a little, you know, it got to me a little bit. Yeah. Um, just thinking about stuff. Uh, we spent a lot of time when the internet first came out. Actually, uh, we'd start looking up uh, like NWA and Dr. Dre and just start getting informed about where everything started. Right, mm-hmm. looking up all kinds of shit. Um, where you know back then for you where where was music what did it mean to you nwa was was a was a heavy fixture be you know california is so big it could be like three or four different states so um contrary to popular belief a lot of people that's not that are that aren't from california they they always when they when they think of california they think at la hollywood palm trees sunshine like like that's that's not that's not it. That's a small part of the entire state is huge. It'll probably take you a whole day from end to end to drive through this whole state. Like yep. take forever. Um, Northern California, the Bay Area is a lot different than LA. We don't do the Bloods and Crips thing. Um, it's funny because Sacramento does. Okay. That's <laughs> close to us, but you know, it's it's on the opposite end, but they're like an outskirt city of the Bay Area. They're not really considered the Bay Area. So, okay. So we, um, for me, it was too short. Right. Initially. And obviously NWA. And then yep. you had Ice-T. Yeah. And then you had a bunch of Bay Area artists. You had, uh, you had Too Short. You had MC Poo. You had Ann Banks. You had, you know, a lot of these guys. And then when you, when you, when you get, you know, Seagram, rest in peace, when you get, in the early 90s, you get Drew down and you get the loonies, the whole five on the thing. You, you know, it the Bay Area sparked a lot of careers. Yeah. Fun fact, Master P is from New Orleans. <laughs> but he got his start in the music, in the rap game in the Bay Area. He really? Was, yeah. He was living in Richmond, California. It's a little city. Uh, about, I didn't know that. Yeah. About 15, 20 minutes away from uh, Oakland. So... Um, E-40, all these guys that showed him where he learned how to do the independent music thing. Yeah. He did it from Too Short, E-40, Sebo, like all the Bay Area artists, JT, the bigger figure. He, he learned all these things in the Bay Area. Right. And then took it to a whole nother level. And, you know, when he got that distribution deal. Yeah. But he learned how to do all that stuff. Just right. like Tupac, you know, is on record saying if he's gonna claim somewhere, he's claiming Oakland. East Coast. But but started in the East born, Coast. Yeah, but he, yeah. he's born, he's born on the East Coast. But yeah, people just love people love the Bay Area, man. It's you know. Speaking so speaking of this coast thing, <clears throat> the whole East Coast, West Coast thing, um, mm-hmm. that was just completely blown up by the media. Yeah. Do you believe that? It I mean, it was a it was a lot of it was a lot of gasoline thrown on that fire. Yeah. Um, you know, people people are proud of where they're from. So when you talk about, you know, I have a tattooed on me. I got a big ass Raider symbol on my back. You know, yep. like you 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 know, being from being from Oakland, being from the Bay, Area, you you love where you're from, mm-hmm. right? And I'm pretty sure people from other places love where they're from. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you 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 get a bunch of young african-american guys making a whole lot of money having a whole lot of influence on 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 generations and culture right yep and, you know when you get to when you get 
you know, big business behind it and they get involved, you know, some it's a lot of money to be made. And, and as you know, controversy sparks sales and interests in a crazy yeah. here in America. So, you know, that's that's I think that that was a part of it. Um, do you think do you think any of that controversy might have been staged? I do. Yeah, me too. I do. I mean, any like I said, anytime there's a large amount of money to be made yep. um, from something, there's going to be some turmoil. There's going to be some 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 bad apples you know yeah. you know it's the greed and it's the it's the ability for and then and then you have street dudes like for real street guys yes sir and now part of entourages and they're 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 now making six figures yep. <laughs> you know so you're an uneducated you're, six figures yes right so, so there's a whole lot of and they and, and behind that six figures. They, they don't really have nothing to lose. So they so, take street mentality with them. And you know, now, yeah. now, now, now these are six figure street dudes, like like yeah. for real street dudes. We ain't yeah. talking about the, the yeah, they're the, not playing. They ain't playing. So yeah, you know, it turns into something else. And then, like I said, you have, you know, the whole the whole bad boy thing and you know, the whole death row thing, and people, you know, when they came to California, they would pay for protection and you know things yep. of that nature so now you have these six-figure street dudes yep. <laughs> you know with virtually they don't really care about killing nobody or, or or doing something like that so you know now you have a situation to where it's be, it's bigger than the music it is now turned into something else the whole narrative has been changed now it's the east coast versus west coast when it initially started it was between two people yeah. Did you, so when you were growing up, we'll get into this really quick. So my biggest worries and fears when I was growing up, um, what's for dinner? Mm -hmm. Where am I, you know, what, what, what sport am I going to play that night? Um, you know, that kind of shit. Did you have fears, you know, growing up in Oakland? Mm -hmm. What, what kind of shit were you going through? Oh, you, you, I mean, people selling drugs. Yeah. That was the big thing in the eighties and the nineties. Like you saw the, the older guys on the block, you know? So, so no, you, you, you saw the older guys on the block with the nice car, and big fat gold chain, couple beepers, you know? Yeah. You know, so you, you kind of, you kind of were infatuated with that lifestyle. I mean, cause that's what you've seen all day. Yeah. You know, but even though I, you know, and this is this is me going outside of the house. I had a mother and a father in the home, you know, went to work every yeah. day. And you just, you know, you kind of as a kid, you start looking like, dang, man, I, you know, I want to be able to buy those sneakers. You know what I'm saying? I want to that's that look fly. I want to be like that. Yeah. So you, 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 you were in a situation to where back then people was really making a lot of money standing on the corner for three or four days. Yeah. That that don't exist no more, but that was a thing back then. So, you know, and then they would recruit like the junior high kids, like 12, 13, preteen, early teens to sell drugs for them. Yeah. And you, you can make yourself a considerable amount of money. So um, you had the temptation of that. You had the temptation of, I mean, there's there's like rampant drug dealing, it's prostitution, it's fighting, it's gunshots, like this is just an everyday thing, kind of like it. I mean, yeah. it, it kind of becomes normalized, you know? Oh yeah, I bet. And, and that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not a good thing. And 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 no. to go back into what we was talking about earlier, it's like um a lot of people from inner cities across America, they have uh post-traumatic stress di disorder and don't even know it. Because you you shouldn't be six, seven, eight years old finding crack you know, outside and needles and hearing gunshots and, you know, you know, you, you go to school, oh man, did you hear such and such got killed? Oh, wow. You know what yeah. I mean? You shouldn't, you shouldn't be exposed to that stuff as a kid. No. So it becomes a normalized thing. And, you know, once again, we talked about the, the traumas that people go through as a kid, then later on in life, those things rear their <laughs> ugly head. And it, it could have absolutely nothing to do with what you're currently going through, but that that triggers something. Yeah. 
And, you know, when you never deal with things, you know, it can affect you as an adult. Yeah, so for those, sure, are, those, are the, those are the type of trappings growing up in Oakland back then, you know, that were, that were, um, you know, abundantly around. Wow. You know, yeah. Are, we didn't have any of that in my town. N- nothing. I mean, I grew up in a town that's got maybe 18,000 people, west coast of Canada, you know, Vancouver yeah. Island. I didn't yeah. see any of that. Nothing. It's, 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 it's a different, it was a, it was a different time, man. And, you know, Oakland don't even look like Oakland no more, really. Right. Like, I've heard you say that. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the saddest part of, you know, back home is the homeless, you know, situation. We yeah. got a lot of homeless people. There's a lot of that here now. And, uh, you know, I feel, I feel for a lot of those people, especially when you drive by those encampments and it's, it's, it's bothersome because yeah. we, live in, we live in what is supposed to be the greatest place in the world with all the, the opportunity, right? And you have all those people with no home. Nothing, no opportunity, no hope, no, no hope, you know, no hope for tomorrow, no hope for the next hour. Right. You know, it's sad, yeah. So once again, channeling thoughts. And I, I mean, when we talk about fears, that's, that has always been one of my biggest fears as a, as a kid. Is you know I don't want to I don't want to never be homeless I don't never want to yeah. be in that situation right I have that fear even now you but it, but but as a man you have that fear so that keeps you doing what you can never oh, be yeah. complacent like yeah I, well, I, I think it keeps you humble too though right yeah like and I don't I mean it's a fine line between humble and I mean confidence and arrogance too like yeah. I, I think as a man you have to be confident yes. And I, I think sometimes a lot of people mistake, I know for me, mistake my confidence for arrogance. I'm by no means arrogant. I have to be confident. That's a, to me, that's a part of being a man. Like yeah. when you lose that confidence about yourself, yeah. then I think you lose parts of your masculinity. I, I just, for me, and I've, I'm reading this book Right, because I'm, I'm an avid reader, so I, I'm reading this book, and it's uh, how to be a superior man or the way to be a superior man. I'm yeah, have misquoted the title, but I'm like halfway through this book. Right, and I'm learning so much about this book because it's like I thought I knew women. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And boy, oh boy, they say this, they really mean that. They yeah. do that they really mean to do that and this it's been enlightened and an, an enlightenment an enlightenment enlightenment to me you know to 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 read this stuff yeah and un, try to better understand because it makes you look at yourself yeah because you have to be very analytical when you're dealing with people in general because they you you can't expect people to think the same way you think Absolutely not. I was like, yo, this shit is deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Know? So yeah, man, it's it's a it's a it's a lot to it's it's complicated, but it's not complicated, but it's complicated, if that makes any sense. It's complicated. So, so a book, a book maybe if you can have the time to read it by December 30th. Uh mm-hmm. our our guest December 30th being Theo Flurry. Mm-hmm. Um that's gonna be a, a great show. He's got a book called um playing with fire and it basically goes through his whole career um and it's a really good read i have the book i've i've read it i'm going to read it again before the show mm-hmm. um definitely check that one out what were your thoughts on that 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 uh 1987 uh world junior brawl that i sent you that was pretty crazy eh? that was turned up <laughs> that was dude so i saw a lot of that bullshit playing ice hockey I saw a lot of bullshit playing ice hockey. I remember a tournament. I'm going to bring this up to Theo. Uh, we had a, a non-contact tournament in Duncan on Vancouver Island here. And we're all Port Alberni boys playing playing contact hockey. And just the thought of playing non-contact midget hockey at the time, there's just a feeling about it that I damn well knew something was going to happen and it was bad. So we, we started brawling, man. Like every game in that tournament, there, there, was, there were fights. Then we get into the, the second to last game. And uh, another brawl. Last game of the night, there was supposed to be the third place trophy presentation. 
and there was a, a, another bench clearing brawl. And that was the first time that when I was playing ice hockey, that I was actually scared to be in the arena, that I thought somebody could seriously get hurt. Because mm-hmm. uh, we had coaches jumping the glass and jumping in, you know, getting in fights. All the goalies, all the players, just everybody. It's complete mayhem. And I, I honestly thought somebody was going to get hurt. And that was the first time I was scared to be playing ice hockey. So you don't get that kind of shit in, in football. I mean, I guess you do, but in a sense, you know? Well, I, I mean, it, first of all, you got a helmet on. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. If, if there was a bra, you know, somebody may grab your face mask. That could, that could hurt. Yeah. Get your neck snapped up real good, but... The, the the whole hockey thing that that's the culture though is the fighting and the brawling is a part of the culture i never you know got into hockey and all of the 11 years i parts of 11 years i spent in vancouver i never went to a hockey game what never why not just not I mean, your thing eh? i don't i i, I would have i would have went i just I, I never really tripped off of it like eh. yeah <laughs> yeah so you know um but that is you know that's part of the culture so i can see but that that clip you sent me that was with the lights to turn nah no nah, that's that was, but you it, it's it's because you can you can get cut with the with the blades on the on the on the skates and yeah oh man no stick yeah. hit upside the head with a stick and you don't have any face covering all you got on is a helmet so and th- those usually come off in fights too you're taking yeah. the helmets off right right so absolutely crazy um i'm excited for that show get into it with theo flurry um, he's lived a hell of a life and, uh, I'm sure he's got a lot of stories he'll be able to share with us. So definitely Indeed. looking forward to that one. So, so before we wrap it up, um, uh, mental health is definitely something that needs to, you know, some attention needs to be given. I, I know athletes and other, there's not really too many platforms that really go into detail about, you know, problems that, that occur from mental health. And I think it's, it's imperative as 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 we as people pay attention to those signs and and, and we, we talk to people. There's it doesn't make you crazy or less than to talk to somebody. No. I think um people people are afraid to see themselves. You know, um they're they're afraid to look in the mirror and see the real them. Yep. People often blame others for problems and really it's, 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 it's a, I don't want to say it's a figment of their imagination, but it's them that carry some baggage that turns that, that remember we talked about that little thing, yeah. and this big ball when talking to somebody, talking to the right people too. Yeah. I, I, I will say this to the, to my end days, you cannot deal with people or try to get better from communicating or conversating with people that are cheerleading your bullshit. You, you exactly. Just, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be real and you yeah. gotta, you gotta look in the mirror and face it's an honest, it. honest mirror. You got to. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. Right. It's an excellent dude though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can vote for that. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I will, I will listen. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's okay to be wrong. It's fine. <clears throat> but it takes a it takes a, a mature person to be able to accept their their faults and try to work on their faults. Yeah. I can't, I'm not gonna sit here and and think that I don't have faults and wanna you know we all do point I've, faults in other people. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. Cause a lot of like I said, to me. The world could be so much easier with better communication. I agree, and that's you know that's 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 across the that's across the board. So, yeah, man, just people understanding that when you have uh, suicidal thoughts, when you have, you know, you feel you feeling sad, you feeling down, find somebody that you can 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 confide in, and 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 talk, because that 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 depression place is a scary place. Yeah. You don't want to, some people can't climb out of that hole. Right. You know, I, I, I was in that space for almost a year. And like I said, I had, you know, I was playing professional football, you, yeah. know, around, you know, the fellas and the thing that I love to do. And that kept me distracted. And I, I, I was able to channel 
all those, all that negative energy and those negative thoughts into something positive. Yeah. And as we all know, we can only use negative energy as a positive source for so long. And you got to discard it and find something else. So, yeah. yeah. The other side of that too, sorry, is, is, is to realize that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're not the only person that thinks these things. And, um, you know, if you find yourself to a point where you're really struggling is, you know, definitely seek professional help. If you can, there are, are, there's a vast, you know, with the internet these days, there's a vast amount of, of numbers to call, of, you know, people to reach out to. There's uh, crisis lines in Canada. There's a, a crisis line in my community, the QS crisis line. Um, you know, definitely reach out and get help. People do care. I 100% guarantee you that there's people out there that love you and they want to see you alive. And, uh, the, you know, the whole world is not against you. Oh, absolutely. You, 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 you know, once again, it's okay. Men, I know we, we often too tough <laughs> to, yeah. to talk to people, but a real, a real man to go ahead and, and talk to somebody, right? Because we, we, we all have things going on and, the, the, the beauty of having fr like real friends mm -hmm. that you can talk to, they gonna understand what you, you know, what you're going through and they're gonna be there to help you get through it. Definitely. So you just, like you said, you never know what somebody else is, is going through. I had, a, I had some of my players at the junior college, we, we talked about depression and I told my story and they like, huh? Like Coach Marsh, I would have never known. Well, I don't. There's, 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 there's times when I'm going through some of my worst moments and times. Nobody will ever know. But you're just as human as everybody else is, though. It's yeah. going to happen, right? Just because you're Dante Marsh or a pro <laughs> athlete, or you know, uh, you're yeah. going to tell me that Mike Tyson's never dealt with, you know, with with, with <laughs> mental health, obviously, right? Obviously, big time. And and yeah. we all do because we're all human beings. Yeah. I'm just me. I'm Dante. I'm, I don't look at myself as better than nobody. I'm, no. I'm a normal human being. So I'm going to go through the normal shit that a normal person going to go through. And I think once again, that's, that's part of me uh, that, that, that some could see as a detriment is really one of my, my, my superpowers is yeah. I, I have to remain confident because if I don't, I'm I'm, I'm, my shield is gone, and that's an insecurity. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, hear me out. It's a, it's an insecurity for me mm -hmm. to, to not be confident because my whole life I had to be confident, especially to be able to make it to where I made it, to yeah. doing what I'm doing. I had to be confident. I had to be confident as a kid in the neighborhood. So you're gonna get picked on. Yeah, you gotta be confident. So, yeah. I think sometimes that may come off wrong to certain people and it's not it's not arrogance it's not it's not uh, you know it's not me thinking more of myself it's just i'm i'm vulnerable without that confidence yeah you said <laughs> it's your, your shield yeah yeah and it's you know it's I'm, a, I'm 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 cognizant of that i'm aware of that yeah so, if, if, if I'm aware of it, then I, I know when to tone it down, and I know that I, in certain instances I gotta I gotta tone it down a little bit. But I know that about myself. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Yeah, now, I was moving around in life, and I didn't know that about myself, and that I think that'd be more of a problem. But <laughs> you no, know, we Probably. all we all got things, man, that we, we can all... get better on. I mean, yeah, definitely. So, all right, all right Dante. Um... I appreciate you coming on. Indeed. This episode, it's, it's been fun. Like I said, this is the idea we wanted to kind of do in the first place. And uh, we've uh, we've come back to it. And, uh, you know, once again, maybe in a, in a month or so, we'll chop it up again. And hopefully we'll be in a different place with this pandemic. Right. Uh, well, we better be anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope so, man.